At one point during this show, Von Wagner said to Robert Stone, what will my dad say if he saw this? Now, I don't really have the answer for that, but I want to ask one simple question. What would any wrestling fan think when they're watching this show? What happened to this once proud brand that blended wrestling and entertainment and now can barely even do 10% of either of those correctly most weeks? Uh, uh, God damn it, son. <sighs> I'm John Renton with my review, WWE NXT. We're about to enter summer, and NXT is really goddamn lukewarm. I get that it's a developmental brand. They have to let people grow and learn on the fly. The show should not be on cable television. Put it on Peacock. Honestly, this show has no justification to be on cable TV. You want to have the occasional special? Fine, but just the week-to-week -week formatting. Sure, some things make sense. Not a lot of these feuds are really any good, and they need to call more people up. They need fresher faces, and they need people that are actually ready for TV, so they are stuck in a goddamn rut. Speaking of being stuck in a rut, here's Baron Corbin. He talks about, you know, he wanders backstage. He tells this one random girl, hey, hit my music. Okay. <laughs> so they do, and then he talks about how, you know, it's like, over the next eight years, you've actually been on the main roster for just over seven. By the way, math is hard. I get it. Um, he talks about how he's been dominant, and he was the last man to pin Roman Reigns, and that's true. That's sad, but it's true. And this is also the house that I helped build. He was in NXT for a year? I'm trying to remember. I don't think it was that... I don't even hate Baron Corbin. He's reliable, and he will never hurt anybody in the ring. He's safe, reliable. People can work with him and not have to worry about having a difficult match. But goddamn, as far as a character, he's not interesting. <laughs> Here's Dragunov. He says, after what I did to die, Jack, I should be the next in line. And then Corbin mocks him when Dragunov, in his sleep, could put on a better match, or at least a more interesting match than Corbin. And then Trick jumps Corbin. And there we go. Well, Dragunov had left by this point. More on Dragunov here in a little bit. But this was like the first 10. The show was turning into like a, a Raw where just, you know, we had endless talking in the beginning. And then we had matches that didn't really mean anything. And the format of these shows, it's getting to the point where we see like people make an entrance and then they go to break. And they come back, they go backstage. And then we get to a match. We have a couple minutes. We go to another break and it's just endless recycled stuff so anything you want to try to get into it's a problem as far as widespread on wrestling it, it's frustrating because there are good things in NXT there have been good things since NXT rebranded as 2.0 the problem is is week to week the show just feels like a mess anyway um <clears throat> earlier today Thea is all hurt because Charlie Dempsey and Drew Gulak have been putting her through the ringer to toughen her up. And Dookie Nuke, he is wondering what the hell's going on. Duke Hudson, I'll just say that. No, nobody's worth these goddamn nicknames anymore. Um, I hate this Chase U shit. I will say right now that the Chase U stuff is some of the worst shit this side of Booker T's commentary. I'm not even talking about the talents. I'm talking about the concept of it. It's a universe. It's a fake university. Good God. Mr. Backlund, the Bob Backlund vignettes when he was doing that stuff. That was entertaining. Chase you. I'm sorry. Is not. Diamond Mine, by the way, <coughs> were making their way to the ring. This is right after Steiner had attacked Dragunov and beat him up. So yeah, Diamond Mine, that's the Creeds and Ivy Nile taking on... Uh, the former grizzled hung veterans are just waiting out their contract and Ava Braun. And they really thought that it was good to start with this match. Nearly 20 minutes into the show, we get this. Booker's commentary is dog shit. I want him run out on a run out of town. Just run him out of town. Run him back to Houston. Go be in your goddamn school and do something other than this. Because Booker T's commentary, it is abysmal. I am embarrassed that he is one half of one of my favorite tag teams of all time. I'm embarrassed I ever cheered for this guy. He is rotten. He is wor he is the worst goddamn commentator going today on any mainstream wrestling program. Any. Any U.S. mainstream wrestling program. I'm including AEW in that because they tend to have their commentators just talk over each other. But Booker T is rotten. So, 
Julius is a beast. Stop thinking about it, Noah. I know you're thinking about it. We're in three minutes to the break. Ava, she's not cut out for this. She is not. I know that she's had knee injuries and it takes time, but good grief. It's, she uses a loaded mask to get the victory. This was a match they thought should be on a cable broadcast. And then Stax is talking to Tony D, D in general. And why is this on a wrestling? Why? Why? Why is this on a fucking show? Fine. I'm fine. I wanted to cheer Tony D. I want to cheer Stax. All this stuff. It's stupid. This is. Pull this from cable, is what I noted. Pull it from cable. Von Wagner and Robert Stone are doing bad therapist commentary where Robert Stone uh, apparently couldn't get Vaughn to listen to any therapist. And then there's some blonde that looked straight off of a Cinemax set. Who I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, that's just the way they said. And Vaughn's like, no, don't worry, Stone, I have this. He's going to go to a nice, you know, therapeutic session. <laughs> what would my dad say if he saw this? I don't know, Vaughn probably tell you to find something else to do. Dana, or da Dana, Danny Palmer took on Blair Davenport. I, I don't get it with Blair Davenport. I mean, I didn't get her when she was beat Priestley. She's not awful in the ring. Danny needs more time. <clears throat> um, by the way, they did forget to uh, turn off the smoke machine. Damn it, Frank, you have one job, and Falcon Arrow wins it. I'm not going to bother covering some of these matches. They're not any good, um, or if they're just meaningless. Apparently, Dana Brooke is here in NXT. She's been there for eight years. I'm not advocating for people to lose their job. I just don't think that Dana really should be in this company anymore because I think they've done everything they can with her. I'm not saying she doesn't work hard, but it they've tried, they've tried, they've tried, they have tried, and it's not working. Uh, come one, come all, Mc, or Tiffany says to Mackenzie. I ain't even going to have to say anything to that. And then Trick Williams took on Baron Corbin. Why was Corbin dressed like an extra from the recent uh, remake of White Men Can't Jump? Again, nothing wrong with Corbin as far as in-ring work and Trick has improved and Corbin focused on the knee and that played a factor into the finish where Trick got hit with the end of days. Again, nothing wrong with the match, but it didn't mean anything. <clears throat> and then we have Frazier's Last Week Tonight parody. They have made me not want to see Dragon Lee ever again, so I've written off Dragon Lee. Mackenzie is with Wes and Ali. Fabulous he. He wants a North American title shot. And then Ali took on Joe Wayne Gacy in a match that... Sure, I don't have as much vitriol for Joe Wayne Gacy as other people do. And Ali is a good worker, but I've been given no reason to care about Ali for years. Because anytime I get interested, they beat him down. They're going to give him a couple wins here. They're not going to do anything with him in NXT. He's probably going to be the same as uh, Apollo. He'll have some... Decent moments, and that'll be it. Uh, there was a 450 for three. Again, nothing wrong with the work. And then um, the goons, the former <coughs> grizzled young veterans, weighing out their contracts, they jump them right after the bell. Apparently, they missed their cue. Or they were supposed to, oh, we'll just make it seem like we just got there. Except it's a small venue, and you wouldn't have to. You could probably just walk on your goddamn fingertips and get there quickly. And then Wes and Bates show up, and we're getting a six-man tag next week. That's what I noted, and I was right. Briggs and Jensen are talking backstage to Fallon. Fallon's going to be in the Battle Royal. Then Blade in a no favor. Remember when they could have been a pretty good tag team, and now they're just making them do bad comedy? Speaking of bad comedy, here's Tank and Hank, who, I mean, they're fine. And then Gallus show up to say something. I don't know what they said. I assume it wasn't even a language on this planet. And this was a segment that featured people talking. Then Eddie Thorpe took on Damon Kemp. Damon Kemp says, you can't beat me again. And then he did. <clears throat> he did. He beat him even though Damon had his foot on the rope with a German suplex spot in the corner. Oh, and also apparently Dar is calling his crew the Meta Four. I want to put this entire crew on the Meta Floor and basically mop the floor with them. I do not understand anything that Noam Dar says. I don't know why Oro is there, and this is the best they can do for Lash Legend, who has a pretty good look. I, I, why am I supposed to care about anything Noam Dar is involved in? The Heritage Cup. I have seen all I want to see at the Heritage Cup. After that match with Dragon Lee, that was rotten. I never want to see one of those again. <sighs> 
<laughs> so anyway, Gigi's talking to her brother. Kiana mocks her for disappointing her family, and they were catty with each other. Then Dabba Kato took on Reggie Scripps. Um, Axie and Verge showed up and did a bunch of jumping around and distractions, and believe it or not, Reggie Scripps got the victory. One, two, three, with a roll-up. And then Dabba Kato beat the shit out of them. Dabba Kato has been in that company for about seven years, and it it's not working. It's not working at all. It's proof that the Performance Center doesn't always work. Anyway, so the schism are upset. Um, you, can, you can't be one root and hold up the tree. But the tree has Dutch elm disease. This entire show has Dutch elm disease. Google it, kids. Uh, Lyra Valkyria, who looks great, by the way, makes her entrance. Then Cora does. We go to the break, and then back from the break, we cut to Ali basically saying, Hey, Wes and Tyler, you're going to have a match at some point, but we've got a six-man tag first, and also, I've got a Money in the Bank qualifier this Friday. If Ali wins, I'll be amazed. Um, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Others are in the ring. Roxanne makes her entrance. Dana makes her entrance. And that's the number one contender's battle royal, and enough. Just enough. Enough of the battle royals. I don't care. I don't care. I didn't know who some of these women were. I have no problem with featuring a lot of women. I have no problem with the women main eventing. But the thing is, they've done so many battle royals and tournaments and stuff like that that it doesn't matter. Blair Davenport showed up. Roxanne attacked her. And Tatum Paxley apparently is aligned with Blair Davenport. Why? Fuck if I know and fuck if I care. Um, they did a spot where Lash Legend had taken out, uh, sorry, Jamara Jackson, but you're on the floor for real. And Oro and then Lash Legend. Launched her into the steps, Thea that is. And then Thea fired up when Dana and Cora were in the ring. And Thea Hale won the goddamn match. And Chase, you celebrate and wrestling died more. That's nothing against Thea. Thea has energy. The Chase, you uh, stuff is stupid. Apparently, the two blondes holding her up were some uh, chandelier twins, I guess. I think is what they're called. I don't know. I don't know who they are and I don't care. Um... They mention their names, but it's like we have no con no context. I don't know who they are. And then we cut back to, well, Thea's celebrating with all the Chase University rejects. Then Steiner basically says, I'm going to beat everybody down from the top to the bottom. Speaking to the top, hey, Rollins, you were the first NXT champion. Why don't you come try me? Okay. Weird, but all right. There you go. That's the end of NXT. I am, each week, I debate whether I'm going to review it. As long as people keep watching, I'll see. Maybe something good might happen on the show, but Jesus Christ. And Booker T, just send him fucking back to Houston. Have just, don't even have Vic call the goddamn show. Send Vic on vacation so he can decompress and just don't have any commentary. Because at this point, Vic can only do so much. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.